Good morning. Good I'm morning. Delegate Marcia Price, and I have the honor of representing the 95th District, which includes uh, parts of Newport News and Hampton. And there were a, quite a few things that I felt needed to be accomplished during this session in order for me to go home and say we had done our jobs and increasing the minimum wage is one. Uh, but as the conversation has progressed, I've realized that I need to say raising the minimum wage in the right way. A false dichotomy has pitted proponents of businesses against advocates mm -hmm. for workers and vice versa. But what I know is that businesses and workers can both thrive but only when we intentionally have established a system that appreciates and values both. For decades, the General Assembly has taken great strides to make sure that Virginia is the best place to do business. For the next few years, under the leadership of the people behind me and beside me, we will make sure that Virginia is working to make it a uh, best place for workers. The right way to take care of raising the minimum wage is to make sure it's available for everyone. In 2020, we cannot accept minimum wage increases in the Commonwealth that leave behind folks based off their zip code, a lot of whom look like me, and who make 60 cents for every dollar paid to our white male counterparts. Increasing the minimum wage equalizes the paying field across all kinds of industries. Also in 2020, we cannot accept minimum wage increases in this Commonwealth that takes so long to get to $15 an hour that we leave hardworking people making less than a livable wage for the next five to 10 years. Further, waiting too long to get to a $15 per hour will trap the next generation and the same wealth gap and economic insecurity as the generation before them, if not make it worse. Further, in 2020, we cannot accept minimum wage increases in this Commonwealth that create more exclusions to the minimum wage, leaving more people further away from obtaining financial Woo! I am proud of the work that we have done on House Bill 338 and 339, the provisions of which are now included in House Bill 395, which would continue to remove exclusions from the minimum wage, thus including more hardworking Virginians in their ability to earn at least a minimum wage. If we let these exclusions stay in the code, we are continuing a decades-long tradition of discriminating against workers based on the type of work they do. Many of the minimum wage exclusions, as was mentioned, were based in race, as is the flawed proposed regional approach. The minimum wage itself was intended to be a universal floor, but a regional approach, instead of being the rising tide that lifts all boats, would keep some of our communities drowning in debt as they try to make ends meet. Lastly, I will say this. It is the responsibility of government to take action to protect and invest in our residents. However, the General Assembly dropped the ball on economic security and financial empowerment. We would not be contending with what some have called such big jumps if we chose to consistently put into place policies that center workers. So now it's time to fix what we failed to do before to fairly compensate hard work in the Commonwealth. And as some of you have seen on social media, my grandmother turned 101 this month. Ooh. And it is because of the amazing home health care workers that she gets quality, quality care that allows for my dad to take care of his patients and help run the city and allows for me to be here representing thousands of people that are counting on us to raise the rage in the right, right way. So the work of home healthcare workers, domestic workers, and so many others, uh, as has been said, allows for us to leave our homes to do the jobs that keep the economy going as well. I supported House Bill 395 because it is a step in the right direction. Please hear me, it is a step in the right direction. It does not even end poverty, what we're asking for. It is a step in the right direction, and we have to continue our work to make sure that all working Virginians can earn a living wage. I ask my colleagues in the Senate to please put these provisions from House Bill 395 uh, into their version so that we can move on, and I want to give a special shout out to the fierce advocates that have been working on this as you lead the charge, and I hope we will get this done for you. Thank you.